Good morning, everybody. Hello. Welcome to our morning meeting. Here today with any questions about George. Hi, Mary. Hello. If you have any questions about George here, good morning, George. Hi. Uh, please let us know, and we'll be happy to we'll be happy to answer them for you. Good morning. <laughs> He's really sweet. He um, is just a little shy. So I'm going to put him down and flip the camera and we'll see if he gets a little more excited um, as we're walking around here. So we are... Good morning. Hello. So um, George is our wood turtle ambassador. Wood turtles are incredible animals. They are actually um, endangered in this country. So we're really fortunate to have Mr. Georgie here. Um, they are listed as a species of greatest uh, conservation concern here in Maine, which is a way that the state designates that they need to be protected. And um, Georgie here was brought to us. Uh, he has a really long story. He has a really long journey to the Center for Wildlife. He was originally um, found by a teacher. He had been hit by a car and was missing one of his um, one of his legs. You can see. There's that um, fracture in his shell there. Uh, so that was where his original injury was. <laughs> Let's go this way, it's sunnier over here. So um, you can see he has this fracture here. He is actually missing that leg. So he was brought to um, the teacher's school and he was a classroom pet for a while. And these guys are an endangered species, a protected species, so it is not legal to keep them as pets in the state of Maine. So the state actually was a helpful partner in getting him to us. Um, they had an interest in getting him rehabilitated because he is endangered. Um, we were interested to know whether he could be released with only three legs, so we reached out to a researcher at Unity who said yes, they see these guys with three legs in the wild all the time. They actually have a, a wood turtle project that they're supervising. So we were able to get Mr. George in on that project. He had a little radio tracker on him, we released him. And then about six months later, they went out to find George. Um, they tracked him down with his radio collar and figured out that um, or discovered that he was actually missing his other his other foot on the other side, um, his right front foot. So now he has two little stumps instead of front feet, but he's still able to get around. He just is clearly not going to be able to go back into the wild. We did try because he is such an endangered species, but um, he now will live with us at the center with his little his little stumps. But he's a great great little ambassador for us. He is a fairly old wood turtle, so we think he's somewhere around 20 years old, but it's hard to know for sure. Good boy. Hello. Good morning, everybody. Uh, we're just taking him on a little walk, letting him explore before we make his breakfast up. Um, good morning from Penelope. Hello. Um, if you guys have any questions about George, please let me know. George is one of our newer um, ambassadors here at the center. We're actually still waiting paperwork to make him official. So we, um, we do still treat him kind of as a patient, but um, we do try to get him out on these physical therapy walks to make sure that he's staying strong um, because he, um, he does need to still get out and explore. And of course he needs to be fed. So here, Georgie, come with us while we get your food. So we'll see if Georgie wants to eat for us this morning. Good morning. Um, wood turtles in the wild eat a lot of different things. So we have a couple of cups here that have all the component parts of Georgie's breakfast. We also serve all of our diets to our, um, our turtles that eat on land. We give them to them on these slate plates. They help to make sure their beaks stay trimmed. Um, as you can see, George has a beak, kind of like a bird, and that beak needs to be filed down, it needs to be sharpened, and usually in the wild they would do that by eating a lot of different things, digging through the dirt, um, crunching on things, but because we're giving him his food on a platter, things are a lot easier for him, and that beak could easily get overgrown 
if we let it. So we give him a slate plate to help him keep up his, um, his beak looking all nice. So we have a few different things that we feed him. Good morning, Asif. Good morning, Rebecca. Hello, Xander in Plymouth. So we're just gonna let him um, explore a little bit and we'll put together his breakfast for him. So in this cup, I have kind of um, a few ingredients that usually go on there. We uh, always start out with a base of greens for all of our turtles because they are, um, they are omnivores, so they eat a lot of different things, and vegetation is certainly something that they eat quite a bit of, whether it's, you know, a part of whether they're actively trying to eat that vegetation or because they um, it gets stuck to the food that they're eating. Otherwise, many turtles are big fans of protein, but everybody needs greens. Where are you going? You gotta stay, you gotta stay with us. I know. Good morning. Yeah, the coffee is mine. The coffee is not for George. <laughs> so he has this base of greens here that we're going to give him. George um, really loves his fruits and his veggies. So uh, we have a couple of different, um, a couple of different cups here with different things in them. So we have some some shredded up carrot. All of the things that we give to our turtles. Thank you so much, Dan. That's so sweet for you to donate. We really appreciate it. It helps to buy all the groceries that go into making George's platters here. So um, the shredded carrot and the chopped up uh, veggies are all meant to uh, be the appropriate size for George's mouth. Um, these guys don't have a you know opposable thumbs they can't hold things while they eat them um so we do have to make sure that their food is the right size for them that they you know they wouldn't choke on anything um we also in this cup have some of george's favorite things he really loves his fruits so we have some grapes and um some blueberries as well he's really really a big fan of his fruits he's just over here <laughs> it's like I heard something about breakfast. Um, so we have grapes, we have strawberry, we have blueberries, and then a big thing that he also really enjoys are uh, tomatoes. And what's interesting is not a lot of wild animals really eat tomatoes. I mean, um, they definitely occur in nature, but they are a part of the nightshade family. So a lot of animals either don't really like the flavor they're too acidic for them um, but turtles are really wonderful omnivores so they can eat a lot of different things and their you know their stomachs of steel really help to break down anything in tomatoes that might not be too great for for other animals so they do like tomatoes and George is a particular fan of his tomatoes um, and then the last thing that we have in here are fish pieces. Most turtles really do love their protein, um, but George is kind of the exception. He really is not super keen on it. We add some to it and he does, he does eat it um, while he's eating everything else, but if you just give him some cut up fish or something, he won't necessarily eat that by itself. And then the other thing that we have that we sprinkle on here, you guys might be able to see, are these little tiny um, flakes here. Those are blood worms. They're just a type of a type of worm that we give to a lot of the different aquatic animals that live with us. Um, they would normally be found in lots of different waters. So um, we give them a lot to our little um, our little ducklings. You may have seen a post where we were calling for blood worms. Um, and they're just kind of a typical um, aquatic animal food. But they're found in a lot of different water sources. Okay, it's time for breakfast. He's like, no, 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 I'm, I'm wild, I'm going. Uh, George really loves to go on his little, on his walks, uh, which is great because with his injuries, we try to keep him as active as we can to make sure he's still getting around, staying healthy. So we'll see if he's interested at all in his platter. What do you think, bud? So turtles have an excellent sense of smell, so hopefully he can smell all the fruits on here. You want to go for it? He's like, I don't, I'm not really interested right now. Oh, oh, what do you think? 
Hello. Hi, Ryan. Hi, Jessica. Hi, Jen. Um, Jessica, he can have a lot of different types of fruits and veggies. So pretty much any fruit, I would say, is fair game. Um, any berries, any, um, you know, any of the harvest goods that we have around us, especially in the summer, these guys are going to love. Um, and then vegetables, anything sugary, anything that these guys... <laughs> Anything that these guys might uh, be able to come across in the wild, they can go for. So a lot of turtles are omnivores. They're really good at eating um, a variety of things. They can metabolize a lot of different things. They have, again, stomachs of steel. So, And many turtles are fantastic predators as well. So they'll actually hunt. They'll be pretty active hunters in water. A lot of our Aquatic turtles like painted turtles and snapping turtles are incredible hunters. So they'll eat a lot of insects, a lot of small fish in the case of snappers. So they are excellent, excellent hunters as well. Um, but these guys, these um, wood turtles, they're semi-aquatic. So they'll live in uh, like a marshy area um, as well as some like small streams and things like that. And so they will eat anything that you could find along those areas. In our area, we have a lot of wild berries, so a lot of raspberries, blueberries, gooseberries, blackberries, things like that. Um, so turtles really, really appreciate those plants. As you can see, he's going right for the fruit and kind of ignoring everything else. And the tomato, these guys, he loves his tomato. It's really, really funny. We buy tomato pretty much just for our land dwelling turtles. They're the only ones that eat it. So the box turtles and George here are the only ones that eat tomatoes. We were contemplating growing tomatoes at our new facility and we decided not to, A, because they take so much water to grow and we only feed um, some of our patients with them. So they wouldn't necessarily be the best thing to grow in our gardens, even though they are easier to grow. They just do require a lot of water. So he, look at, you got berries all over your face. Yeah. Um, so we, he does love his tomatoes though. He's su super, super into them. Uh, Jen, we suspect he is somewhere around 20 years old, although we are not certain. We had his age estimated by one of the biologists that, um, uh, ran the study that he was in. And, um, you know, it's always hard to guess with turtles. On some turtles like this species, you can estimate based on the the number of rings that you see on the scutes on their shell. So the scutes are the little puzzle pieces of the shell and they do grow outward from a central bone plate. So when they're born, they have the same number of scutes and they grow outward to make the shell bigger as they get um, older. And so, you know, you can kind of tell based on the number of rings on their shell, how old they are. They represent seasons of faster and slower growth, just like the rings of a tree. This ant is trying to get in on the on the party. Um, but it is always an estimation because they might, you know, they might not have much of a ring one year or that those rings might get worn away or something like that. So um, if you take a little magnifying glass and count up all those rings, you will get to somewhere around 20. But we are not completely sure. We do know he's around that age um, based on his size and his um, and the number of rings. So somewhere around there. Good morning, Renee. He is so handsome. He has some beautiful coloration, all the oranges and, um, and the patterns on his shell really do make him look like a piece of wood. So that is how they get their name is the different patterns on their carapace. The carapace is the top part of the shell and then the underside is called the plastron. So he has um, this beautiful carapace that makes him just look just like a piece of wood or a log floating in the water. And that um, does a really good job of camouflaging him. They are a fairly large turtle, but they take a long time to get to this size. And when they're small, they are very easy prey for lots of different animals. Fox and raccoons are big ones. They, um, they will eat tiny little eggs as well as hatchlings. Um, usually baby turtles are hatched out of the shell with a soft shell, so they're actually not as well protected as an adult is. So his shell does a really good job of protecting him, but um, when they're babies and that shell is soft, it's not as useful. Is that ant trying to eat your breakfast? What is he doing? I know. If you guys can hear, that's uh, Bertram. Bertram is always jealous whenever we do these videos about breakfast for someone that isn't him. <laughs> so that's him yelling in the background. 
Um, something really cool that we did recently was we actually were able to get a, um, the uh, folks from Unity to come down and they are doing a genome project on our wood turtles. That's really cool. They are able to take samples of the um, of the fingernails of our wood turtles, so just a little trim of the wood of the fingernails, and do genetic analysis on the tissue they find there to figure out the like relatedness of our wood turtles here versus wood turtles in other regions. Um, <laughs> look at your face; you got stuff all over you. So they um, they took a little trim of George's. I know you got something on your face, bud. Can I help you? okay there I got it um, they got took a little trim of one of his toenails and they're gonna be able to do some genetic analysis on um, on George and figure out how related he is to other um, to other turtles in our area and it'll contribute to a pool of information that hopefully can help them to um, make sure that the genetics of our wood turtles are preserved the diversity of those genetics are pre preserved it's just really cool uh, good morning, John. Hello, Katie. Yes, um, they do get quite a lot of variety in their foods because they um, are normally omnivores in the wild. They usually get a lot of different foods um, while they're out scavenging, while they're hunting. Most turtles do, like I said, like more protein in their diet, but um, George seems really content with all of his fruits. Um, and we always you know, we try to mix up their diet. The worms are great because they kind of sneak the protein into him while he's eating other things. Um, but we do try to go based on what they do enjoy. Hi, what do you think? You're making a mess. You're gonna need a bath after this. Yeah, hi. <laughs> he's got a, a big mess on his face. Um, if you guys have any other questions about George, please let me know. We're just going to hang out and wa help him eat, watch him eat. Um, and we, uh, we're we certainly happy to answer any questions you guys have or, um, or give anybody a shout out who's here with us today. Good morning, everybody. Um, so George, as a, a wood turtle, is one of seven species of turtles that we have here in Maine. The really unfortunate thing about turtles is that <clears throat> most of them do occur in the southern regions of Maine. Um, there are, <clears throat> of course, turtles in the northern regions, but they, um, they certainly do like it a little bit warmer down here in the southern parts, but unfortunately, that is the most developed part of the state as well. And so we do see these guys having a lot of issues regarding habitat destruction and habitat loss due to development. And <clears throat> this is why we always recommend that people um, try to advocate against building roads or developments near wetlands. Um, these guys really rely on wetland habitats and um, and building or filling in those habitats makes it really hard for these guys to survive. Hello. Hi, and luckily we are in a beautiful area that is conserved. Um, Mount A is a beautifully preserved wetland, um, but even Mount A is at, it faces development pressure all the time. So um, we, we are always concerned with, there you go. There's more, are you full? He's like, yeah, I'm done. That was nice, thank you. <laughs> uh, Katie says sunflower shoots are a great source of protein. That's a good thing to know. And there are definitely proteins in the, um, in the vegetation that we do give him. He's not a super huge fan of the greens either, but you know, we do what we can. Um, so we do, we do sneak protein into him in different ways. <laughs> Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle theme for kids. That's funny. Um, Michelle, George was initially hit by a car, we suspect, based on the fracture to his shell. I'm not sure if you guys can see um, that fracture to the right side for you guys of his shell. That, um, that we suspect was originally uh, sustained when he was hit by a car and he also lost that left, his, his left, your right front foot. Um, in that accident and then he was found in the wild by somebody who eventually got him into a classroom and then because he was endangered the state um, 
had him taken out of that classroom and sent to us. And we did, um, you know, we did try to get his, um, hi buddy, get him back into the wild into a radio tracking study of wood turtles done by Unity. And he was out in the wild for about six months with three legs. Um, they had some pretty good information on the survivability of wood turtles with three legs and that they did pretty well. Um, but when they went to track him down, don't go under there, buddy. You're silly. Um, when they tried to track him down after about six months with his radio cut, um, tag on, they found that he was missing his right front foot. I know. So now you can see it's just a little stump there. He's still able to get around. Um, but he, unfortunately, we've kind of we made the choice that you know if we tried once and he came back without another foot I think he's non-releasable so he lives with us now and we're just waiting on his final paperwork to get him back um, to get him officially licensed as a as an ambassador and for now we take care of him we take him on his PT walks um, but we do know that he's non-releasable and our vet has deemed him non-releasable because he is missing two of his four feet um, Katie, that is wonderful. We, um, we are always interested in different sources of greens and vegetables. If you wanted to give our hotline a call and chat with someone in the medical clinic, I'm sure they could definitely, um, give you some guidance as to how to go about, um, donating those or, um, giving us a, a resource. We're always looking for new and, um, good ways to keep these guys well fed. So, that's great. We like to diversify their um, their food as much as we can. Okay, bye. Where are you going, George? Good boy. Nice job, everybody. Um, yeah, so if anyone has any further questions about George, I'm happy to answer them. He is on his way to our house that he has um, here at the center. He does spend the nights indoors um, in our ed hall, but um, during the days he gets to go into his outdoor turtle enclosure that has some nice setups for him so we can go take a take a walk with him over there if he um is headed in that direction nice job georgie where are we going yeah you can see he blends right in with the wood chips here um you know wood turtle is definitely an apt descriptor let's go let's go let's go hi we're taking a little walk so a lot of the walks that we do here at the center are ushering them in the right direction. Oh, I know, Maeve. <laughs> okay, so these are our turtle enclosures here. Um, and George is in the one right next to Henry. You wanna go see? And now we can hear Henry. I know, where are you going? Let's go see your enclosure, buddy. Let's go see your enclosure. You still have some grape on your face. Yeah, you do. He's like, I can walk myself. He's nice John. Hi, Henry. So, um, because we were prepping George's salad, we weren't feeding our friends, and they're very upset about it. So this is George's house. This is his um, outdoor space. He has a couple of hides, some plants, some rocks. He um, he really does love this outdoor space because it's a little bit more uh, like what he's used to, a little bit more natural. So this is his outdoor space. I'm gonna go say hi to Henry. But if anyone has any other questions about George, I'm happy to happy to answer them. We're happy to take a little walk. Let's put you in the sun, buddy. Uh, these guys do occupy a pretty large space and they need to have lots of different um, areas for temperatures in um, in their habitat. So they move a lot re in response to temperature changes. They need places that are warm and are cool so that they can regulate their body temperature. They don't actually have the ability to do that themselves. So they um, they will move around their habitat to try to do that instead. Good job, George. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys have any other questions, I can leave them. You can leave them in the comments, and we'll try to get to them. Uh, but otherwise, we're gonna put George in his house and uh, give him the rest of his breakfast and feed Henry and Maeve and everybody else because they're starving. Okay.
Thank you, George. Thanks for hanging out with us. Hi, everybody. Oh, we got some more questions last minute. Uh, Loretta, they are not vegetarian. They actually do eat a lot of protein. They love insects and fish. Um, and they are what we would call like an omnivore or a scavenger. Um, but they do also eat live prey uh, in the waters. They'll hunt little water insects, things like that. So they are more of an omnivore. Good morning, Naomi from Rhode Island. Hello. Sorry, we're just about to sign off, but thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you guys so much for joining us and thank you for donating. We really appreciate all of your support and we will see you again tomorrow. Kristen will be here. Um, we'll see you tomorrow doing some fun um, exploration of some of the displays and things that we have. So thank you guys so much for joining us. This Phoebe on the post over here is like, hey, Get out of my space. They're nesting on the little docent station here. Good morning, everybody. Thank you guys so much. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.